everyone. I'm 25, which makes me young enough to share a generation with you, my fellow millennials, but old enough that I graduated from high school in the pre-Facebook era in 2003. My senior year isn't chronicled in Facebook photos, tweets, or YouTube videos. We took all our photos with actual cameras, not phones, and we had to wait for the film to develop. The photos that immortalize the South Brunswick High School class of 2003 are all here in this big, hefty yearbook. Next slide. The cool thing about being a senior was that you got to pick, and one more, you got to pick an inspiring quote to appear beneath your photo. On page 45, you see that I chose one by writer Somerset Maughan. It goes like this. It's a funny thing about life. If you refuse to accept anything but the best, you very often get it. That quote was so me circa 2003. I was such a perfectionist. I graduated with a GPA higher than a 4.0 because perfect grades were my obsession. Today, eight years later, I know what Somerset Maughan was trying to say, but I'm not sure he was correct. I do believe that you should only surround yourself with the best people. Cut out anyone in your life who brings you down or who takes away your energy. In your inner circle, you should only let in the best people, those who will inspire you, encourage you, and believe in you. However, when it comes to your work, refusing to accept anything but the best is not so wise. I wish I knew that when I was 17. I wish I knew that perfection was not the end-all be-all. In fact, it is a weight so heavy on your shoulders a blindfold so dark that if you're always looking for the best, you miss the better. A huge breakthrough in my life was when I realized that perfection gets in the way of better. Every day you can do something that brings you a step closer to your goal. The majority of people are so overwhelmed by their beautiful dreams that they drag their feet, afraid that in their first step they'll stumble and fall. But I say, start small. And if you put all your heart into what you want to do, not even a tiny failure can stop you. You'll gain all this new knowledge that makes you better than where you started. Remember that small steps matter. Now, next slide. If you turn to page 52 of my high school yearbook, you hit the senior superlatives page. You know, most likely to succeed, best smile, best public speaker, most likely to be president. I wasn't chosen for any of those. We had to nominate classmates and vote on them on a ballot in our lunch period. In a graduating class of 493, they chose me as the female most shy. <laughs> My male equivalent didn't even pose for the picture. <laughs> he didn't take it as a compliment, so I did the little photo shoot. He did pose for most athletic, though. Uh, so I did the little photo shoot with the yearbook photographer myself. I knew that in 2003, I could be perceived as that shy girl for the rest of my life, to be known by what I didn't say. Or I could take the title of most shy when I was 17 and use it to prove them wrong, as motivation to prove them wrong someday. Realizing that was a small step towards who I wanted to become. Plus, everyone loves an ironic story. <laughs> Next slide. Finally, you could turn to page 64 and you see our junior prom photos, a night at the Oscars. Well, you won't see my picture there because I sat that one out. Click, yes. <laughs> I didn't go to any school dance, actually. So, in 2007, when I graduated college with my journalism degree, naturally I became the prom website editor for Seventeen, Cosmo Girl, and Teen. <laughs> I kid you not. I didn't even read those magazines when I was a teen because I asked my parents for a subscription to Newsweek. I was supposed to be a serious journalist. So what happened to me? In high school, I was a self-defined perfectionist, and my peers defined me as most shy. But I grew up to rock the prom. Well, the answer is simple. It just takes a breakthrough, one step at a time. My breakthrough, oh, back, back. Uh, my breakthrough might be yours, too. I realized that I was my biggest obstacle. I was the one who wasn't letting myself raise my own hand. I didn't let myself have a voice. But when I went off to college, I had a new beginning. No one knew that I was the shy girl, so right off the bat, I was expressive in class. My freshman year, I ran for class secretary. I campaigned with flyers all over the freshman dorms and gave a big speech. Another small step. Did I win? Well, 
No. I lost to a girl who wore a short skirt and a tank top and stuck post-its all over her body during her speech to show that she was organized. But in the grand scheme of things, it didn't matter. Two years later, I went on to start a magazine club on campus and be the president. And my senior year, as I was selling my textbooks back to the bookstore for the last time, the girl at the register said, I remember you. You gave that speech freshman year. I voted for you. So you can lose and still have little victories. That election was one of the first big challenges I gave myself to prove that I had a voice. And once you have that voice, you can fight for anything. So once I got my own inhibitions out of the way, I made another breakthrough. I realized as a prom website editor, if you can rock the prom, you can rock the world. Even though I didn't go to my own prom, I very much feel 17 at heart, and I understood that prom was really so much more than a dress or a dance. It's a celebration of four years of hard work and friends. I loved helping girls plan for a night that they'd always remember. But in 2008, the financial crisis started to happen, and we realized that for many girls, prom was out of budget. I became the founding editor of DonateMyDress.org. DonateMyDress.org is a place where you can go to give or receive a free dress in your area. With the help of Ashley Green from Twilight as our spokesperson, it really took off. That was another step. At the same time, outside of my job, I was volunteering heavily with a charity that cared for children in Liberia, a country in West Africa that was recovering from a treacherous civil war. I traveled to Liberia twice, the Christmas of 2007 and the Thanksgiving of 2009. It was another step. I oversaw the sponsorship program, monitored kids' grades and attendance, and when I was in Liberia, I visited with the school principals and set up a feeding program. But I wanted to do more. I wanted to help more kids find sponsors, specifically girls, because they face greater obstacles and higher risks of dropping out. It's upsetting enough that 130 million youth are out of school in the world, but to make it even worse, 70% of them are girls. Three out of four girls typically will not graduate from high school in developing world countries. So I had an idea. What if there was a directory for school sponsorship programs, just like there was one for prom dress drives? I would use the same marketing and PR skills that may donate my dress a hit to send girls to school who otherwise would not have the opportunity. More than that, we would support these girls year after year so that they could be the first in their families to graduate. In November of 2009, She's the First was born. That was a leap. This past July, we became a 501c3 organization, and to date, we've sponsored more than 150 girls in eight countries, located in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago we raised more than $19,000 and counting in eight days by selling cupcakes across the country. And by we, I mean our generation not rich old people, young, smart, energized, Facebook and Twitter loving high school and college students with some helpful 20-somethings as well. <laughs> so that's my story. I went from most shy in a silly yearbook to prom queen by corporate profession to president and founder of She's the First. She's the First is so much bigger than I am now. 20 campus chapters, more than 4,000 friends on Facebook and Twitter and growing. I'm so lucky that I get to be here today as a voice of She's the First and tell you that breaking barriers is possible when you have an education. If you aren't who you want to be yet, you can change like I did, one step at a time. Before you know it, you'll be leaping, changing others' lives too. It's a funny thing about life. If you believe you can, you might actually do it. Thank you.